I'm going to bring a roll of duct tape with me, too, but I figured I wouldn't get through security with it. I will now call to order the May 9th, 2024, Clackamas County <clears throat> Board of Commissioners business meeting. Administrator Gary Schmidt, would you please call the roll? Yes, thank you, Chair Smith. First, our staff support today. Clerk to the board, Tony Marinick. County Council is Assistant County Council, Sean Lilligren. Roll call, Commissioner Schull. Here. Commissioner West. Here. Commissioner Schrader. Here. Commissioner Savas. Present. Chair Smith. Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. We are holding this meeting virtually and in person. If you would joined us via Zoom for this meeting and are interested in providing public comment, we will prompt you regarding how to do that when the time is right. General public comment will be taken at the usual allotted time. I would like to remind all participants, including staff, all elected officials, and members of the public, that Robert's Rules of Order will be followed in this business meeting. We welcome your opinions and look forward to your polite comments. As a reminder, the board is speaking at the State of the County this afternoon, and I will adjourn the meeting promptly at 11 a.m., regardless of where we're at in this meeting, so I'm asking if we could be brief on that. Thank you. I will now recess as a Board of County Commissioners and convene as the Housing Authority Board of Commissioners. Gary. Next is the Housing Authority of Clackamas County Consent Agenda. Joining you online is Housing Resident Commissioner Ann Leinstra. Are you there, Commissioner Leinstra? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Uh, Tony, would you please read the Housing Authority Consent Agenda? Housing Authority Consent Agenda, Item 1, Approval of Resolution 1984, authorizing the formation of partnership entities providing pre-development loans to the limited partnership and conducting other pre-development activity to, activities to support the redevelopment of Clackamas Heights in alignment with the Cla Housing Authority's repositioning strategy. Total pre-development loans will not exceed $3 million and will be reimbursed at construction closing. Loan funds may include local, state, and federal sources. No county general funds are involved. Item 2, approval of Resolution 1985, authorizing the Housing Authority to issue and sell revenue bonds in an amount not to exceed $35 million to support the development of Hillside Park Building C. Funding is through bond purchasers. No county general funds are involved. Item 3. Approval of Resolution 1986, authorizing the Housing Authority submittal of Section 18 disposition applications for the Clackamas Heights, Oregon City View Manor public housing portfolios, the scattered sites housing po public housing portfolio, and the remaining contiguous public housing units. Funding is from federal sources. No county general funds are involved. Thank you, Tony. Would any commissioner like to remove anything from this consent agenda? Commins commissioner Leenstra, would you like to make a motion? Yes, I move we approve the Housing Authority Consent Agenda as read. Second. I'll second. Commissioner Leinstra has moved we approve the Consent Agenda and Commissioner West has seconded that motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Tony, would you please take the poll? Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Commissioner Schull. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Leinstra. Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 6-0. Thank you, Ann Leenstra, for joining us today. You're welcome. I will now adjourn as a Housing Authority Board and reconvene as a Board of County Commissioners. Gary, what's next? Next is the consent agenda for the Board of County Commissioners. Tony, would you please read the consent agenda? Elected officials, item one, approval of previous business meeting minutes for the Board of County Commissioners. County Administration Item 1, Approval of a Settlement Agreement with Clackamas Progress Partners, LLC for Relief, Event, Notice, and Written Report Number 3 for the Replacement County Courthouse. Agreement value is $144,092.03, plus any additional costs imposed by Oregon City. Funding is through budgeted county general funds. 
Health, Housing, Human Services, Item 1, Approval of a Cooperative Lease Agreement with the Canby Four Square Church to provide space for the Women, Infants, and Children Program. No fiscal impact, no county general funds are involved. Item 2, Approval of a Board Order authorizing issuance of a purchase order for case management software licenses and services through SHI Incorporated under a cooperative contract. Purchase order value not to exceed $316,880 over four years. Funding is through a State of Oregon grant. No <coughs> county general funds are involved. Item 3, Approval of a Revenue Inter governmental grant agreement with the State of Oregon's Housing and Community Services Department for the long-term rent assistance program and services related to the governor's state of emergency due to homelessness. Agreement value is $4,958,448.98 for 14 months. Funding is through the State of Oregon. No county general funds are involved. Item 4. Approval of Revenue inter Intergovernmental Grant Agreement with the State of Oregon's Housing and Community Services Department for outreach services for rural communities related to the governor's state of emergency due to ho homelessness response. Agreement value is $1,850,000 for one year. Funding is through the State of Oregon. No county general funds are involved. Madam Chair, that concludes the list. Thank you, Tony. Uh, does any commissioner wish to remove anything off this consent agenda? I'll entertain a motion. Chair, I move that we approve the consent agenda as read. Second. Commissioner <coughs> West has moved we approve the second, the, excuse me, the uh, consent agenda, and Commissioner Schrader has second the motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Tony, please take the poll. Commissioner Schall. Aye. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Chair Smith. Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you very much. I will now recess as a Board of County Commissioners and convene as a North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District Board of Directors. Gary, please read the item. Next is the consent agenda for the North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District. Tony, would you please read the consent agenda? One item, approval of a goods and services contract with Northwest Playground Equipment for supply and installation of playground equipment and surfacing at the Concord Park. Contract value $662,312.95. Funding is through Metro Local Share and Oregon Park and Recreation Department Local Government Grant Program grant proceeds. No county general funds are involved. Thank you. Does any commissioner wish to remove this item from the consent agenda? Seeing none, I'll accept a motion. I move for approval of the North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District consent agenda. Second. Director Savas has moved for approval of the NCPRD consent agenda, and Commissioner Schrader has seconded that motion. Any further discussion? Tony, can you please call the poll? Director West? Aye. Director Schall? Aye. Director Schrader? Aye. Director Savas? Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you. I will now adjourn as the North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District Board and convene as a Water Environment Services Board of Directors. Gary. Next is the Consent Agenda for Water Environment Services. Tony, would you please read the Consent Agenda? Item 1, approval of a contract with SFE Global Incorporated for the purposes of providing picking services through the Bolton Force Main. Total contract value $287,350. Funding through water environment services, sanitary sewer operating funds. No county general funds are involved. Item 2, approval of a contract with Century West Engineering Corporation for engineering services necessary to design the Rock Creek Extension Project. Total contract value $486,440.90. Funding through water environment services, sanitary sewer or system development charge funds. No county general funds are involved. Thank you. Does any commissioner wish to remove anything off this consent agenda? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion. I move for the approval of the Water Environment Services Consent Agenda. Second. Director Scholl has moved for approval of the Water Environment oh. Services Consent Agenda, and Commissioner Schrader has seconded the motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Tony, would you please take the poll? Director Savas. Aye. Director West? Aye. Director Schrader? Aye. Director Schull? Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. I will now adjourn as a Water Environment Services Board and reconvene as a Board of County Commissioners. And we are up on public communication already. 
This portion of the agenda shall be limited to items of county business which are properly the object of board consideration and should be nonpartisan in nature, as the BCC is a nonpartisan governing body and are ordered by statutes and county code. Testimony is limited to three minutes. Comments shall be respectful and courteous to all. As a reminder, you can email submissions for public communication at bcc at clackamas.us, and these will be accepted as part of the public record. I will now open the meeting for public testimony, and I will take in-person testimony first. I have a couple of blue cards here. If there's anybody in person who would like to testify, please fill out a blue card and put it in the basket. Thank you very much. We'll start with um, the cards I have. Debbie Stromberg, would you please come forward, state your name, your area of residence. And we have a little bit of time today. My name is Debbie Stromberg, and I'm a resident of Milwaukee. I live um, on Wichita Avenue, about five houses down from the Wichita Center. Ma'am, can you speak up just a little bit? Yeah. Pull the microphone closer. Absolutely. Is Thank that you. better? I would like to hear you. Okay. Yep. <laughs> um, good morning, commissioners. Um, I just want to express my gratitude for your continuing talks for the with the North Clackamas School District about the potential sale of the Wichita Center. Almost every week, one of our youth in the Southeast Portland Youth Collective asks if the Wichita Center will be saved. We're telling them it sounds like it will be. This service center has been profoundly impactful for so many of our bright and engaged young people. It's been a resource for food, clothing, and school supplies in episodes when their parents were between jobs. They remember the Ready, Set, Go program and the Head Start Preschool as where they first felt empowered and accepted as part of the community. The summer programs have provided enrichment for so many families who can't afford the other many hundred dollar summer camps. The McKinney Vento Liaison and the Student and Family Advocates are currently working with some of our families to find housing they can afford as rent increases are skyrocketing. <coughs> our families are thriving due to the help provided by the Wichita Center. Please continue to do the good work toward a fair and reasonable sale to the North Clackamas School District. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming forward. Up next, Brendan, Brennan, excuse me, w Wildermuth. Would you p please correct my, me on this? State your area of residence and introduce yourself, please. Yeah, my name is Brennan Wildermuth. I live in Clackamas, Oregon, um, and I'm also one of the leaders of the Southeast Youth Collective. Um, I also want to echo Debbie's sentiments and um, thank you for the work that you are doing to negotiate with North Clackamas on a fair and reasonable deal. Um, it is it is very nice to be in this seat and like be able to say like thank you and like not be like you know pushing for like to, to know that like there's progress happening and to have it be yeah. a positive thing. Um, and so yeah just hoping that a deal can be announced soon and that services won't be interrupted and just uh Thank you for the work that you're doing on that. Well, your comments are appreciated yeah. very much. <laughs> and you're such a happy person. <laughs> <laughs> yes, up next, Mary Steinberg. Okay. Please state your area of residence and introduce yourself, please. My name is Mary Steinberg. I live in Damascus, and I'm a retired pediatrician. And I'm not going to go through the list of all the services that the Wichita Center provide because um, the previous speaker did that. But um, it is really wonderful that all those services are available at a well-established, centralized, trusted, and accessible location. The majority of the stakeholders that use those services are too young to have their voices heard. So that's why I'm here in their place. Uh, to encourage you and support you as you have been to continue negotiating. The, all those decisions um, are for public entities. They represent public dollars. And I, I think I've testified 
to you before about prevention, prevention, prevention. It's so undramatic and it's so unsexy, but everything we can do now to prevent poor outcomes in the future will make a healthier, more robust, and more economical future for everyone. Thank you. Thank you for your um, comments. And Gary, do we have an update for anyone on this, or we're still in negotiations? We are still collaboratively working with the North Clackamas School District and the, and the Park, Parks District on a solution. Um, <clears throat> every morning, very early, I get up and I watch the economic reports. And um, I'm a kind of a nerd that way. And a very alarming statistic came out today. And across America, two-thirds of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. And it's because of the high cost of living. We've seen that with inflation, cost of durable goods, groceries, gasoline. And this board, I think I'm okay in saying, is very mindful of this going forward with this population and popu other populations like it in Clackamas County. Um, it's going to be a problem for all governments if, if inflation doesn't get under control and we, the government must stop the rising prices. Um, I listen to all kinds of economic data and, uh, and the outlook uh, isn't too great for the rest of the year I, I'm fearful of. So thank you for um, reinforcing those ideals and values that you have to this board. It's important. Um, Tony, is there anyone else online who would like to testify? There's not anyone on Zoom at the moment, Chair. No one? Anyone else in the room? Well, thank you very much. I will close the public communication portion of this meeting and we will move on. I tell you, Commissioners, there's even going to be a chance for you all to talk at the end of this. I'm very surprised. Gary, what's next? Next is County Administrator Update. That's me. I like to recognize our employees during my update today. I want to recognize our staff with the Environmental Health Division of the Public Health Division within Health, Housing, and Human Services. They hosted a training recently for operators of the county's licensed pools and spas. Did you know that we licensed pools and spas in Clackamas County? You knew that, Commissioners. Yes, Maybe the I public did. didn't. We do that, and we offered a training for all of those who have a licensed pool or spa. And one of the participants wrote a nice note back that I want to share with you. I took the basic pool operations class, and I wanted to take a moment to thank the county for putting it on. I found the class to be very informative. I am a member of a limited use pool in Clackamas County, so not a professional. The materials and instruction I received will be valuable to take back to our membership. I feel that it will help improve the quality of our facility, thereby increasing the safety and enjoyment of our members, their children, and guests. So thank you to the person who wrote this note and our environmental health team and health, housing, and human services. We do it all here at Clackamas County. Maintain roads, make sure we have wastewater, and we take care of your pools and spas. That is my update today. Thank you, commissioners. Yeah, that's a wide range of services. Thank you, Gary. We are now at Commissioner Communication. Commissioner Scholl, you're up first. Yes, um, because of our schedule today, I'm going to elect to hold my comments to issues on Tuesday and for the business meeting next week. Okay. We do have time, Commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Savas, you're up. Yeah, well, I'll just keep the theme going on swimming pools. Um, Yesterday, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Kellogg Wastewater Treatment Plant, and embedded in my, in my talking points was the fact that uh, the Kellogg um, uh, Treatment Plant discharges 7 million gallons of water a day, um, clean water, into the Willamette River which is equivalent to 1,750,000 swimming uh, bathtubs. 1,750 1, bathtubs. And I thought, well, that's kind of a hard thing. So I always, we always use swimming pools often. So I looked it up, and the average swimming pool is 18,000 to 20,000 gallons, which equates to, 7 million equates to just over 400 swimming pools per day. Um, I won't tell you what the math is on 365 days a year. Um, but... Um, all to say that um, it was kind of great, number one, to, um, for those of you who remember Milwaukee or driving down McLaughlin 20 years ago or 30 years ago or 50 years ago when it was first done, it stunk pretty bad there. It had a big odor issue because of the wastewater treatment plant. 
old style, and, and uh, we, um, you know, we have made significant improvements, especially after the dispute, the 25-year dispute between the county and the city of Milwaukee over a 25-year dispute um, that was able to solve in my first year, first year and a half of being a county commissioner, uh, which what was happening there is that we, we wanted to do all the improvements, and the city wanted those improvements as well. Actually, they wanted the plant move, clear water, for those of you who remember the clear, clear water thing, uh, move it uphill and pump all the wastewater from the lower elevation up to Oregon City and then, then let back flow or let gravity feed back down. That would have been the pumping cost in today's world and the cost of electricity. I mean, in hindsight, it was the best move we made not to do that and to continue the plant and gravity as engineers would typically do that. So um, in turn, but we couldn't do the improvements there um, because um, we needed the approval from the city for the permits to do the electrical and do the, all the stuff. So after this dispute was settled, uh, the board of directors ourselves uh, back then um, authorized the improvements to upgrade the facility and those upgrades are continually happening. So the theme yesterday was invest in infrastructure, invest in infrastructure, and how critical wastewater is and clean water is to our world and it's very important. Recreational use um, there was a beautiful day. The weather was nice. Um, but um, yeah, it was nice to celebrate 50 years and I realized that I've spent 40 years in that neighborhood. So 40 of the 50 years uh, that uh, I, I lived down, down the street. And we did, when we drove by the plant uh, way back when we first moved here, uh, it was, and sometimes it would actually, the, with the wind was going, it would go down to my neighborhood. You could smell the plant from my neighbor in my backyard. That's how bad it was way back. But it, uh, it was a great day. Um, next week, I'll be in Washington, D.C., more infrastructure, advocating for Clackamas County um, for the transportation improvements. We're going down there with the, we call it the JPAC trip, the Joint Policy Advisory Committee on Transportation. Our group is about almost 40 people. It will be going down there. Um, uh, advocacy, meeting with um, our federal officials, uh, U.S. Department of Transportation, others, and um, you know, we always go there thinking we're going to come back with loads of money, but it never really works out that way. But we try to advocate for our projects, and there's a lot of projects in the area, a lot of, a lot of need, very few resources, and that's the theme um, that across government these days, uh, no matter what kind of form of government you are, the, the need for financial resources is with inflation and all the other things we talked about is really stressing ourselves out. Last evening was the NCPRD uh, District Advisory Committee meeting. We had a good meeting. It went a little bit long last night, but it was nice to have the group focus on tangible things um, about the district and a presentation from the people that are doing the systems plan. A lot of uh, energy and excitement about that. Good questions. Um, but it was nice to see the group um, uh, gravitating around the district, um, the, the concerns facing the district. So it was constructive. Um, I need to share a few things with our staff, a couple suggestions on fixing the bylaws. Um, bylaws are so technical that there's always misunderstandings, and I think I've ironed that out last night. I think I understand how to, how to finish that. And, you know, Gary, your name was mentioned last night constructively with regard to the comments you made with Mr. Munns way back at the last time there was discussion about the bylaws. So let, we'll try to get that settled here and, and uh, put a draft together that I think the group can get their arms wrapped around. Um, but other than that, um, that's what I have to report for today. Thanks, Paul. I have an extra suitcase I can send with you to D.C. to bring back the cash. Okay, great. Bye. Great. Just saying. <laughs> Great. I was going to bring a roll of duct tape with me, okay, just, yeah. just in case it was a mechanical problem. <laughs> but I, th I thought they might, that security might want to say, what is this for? So, <laughs> Thank happens. you. Commissioner Schrader, you're up. Yeah, well, I have some uh, fun news uh, that I uh, am uh, working for. Uh, I am a part of the counties for Economic Mobility Leadership Advisory Council at the National Association of Counties. And because of that role, colleagues, um, when I go to the conferences, uh, NACO is helping uh, with the bill, which I'm really pleased about because, as, as I said, I think that uh, I try and save as much money as possible mm -hmm. when I go to these. Great. And right now, what I'm going to be doing later today after I talk, I hope, about economic development a little bit at our uh, 
Our forum today, uh, we have a Rural Leaders for Economic Mobility initiative that we are working on. And so I am going to be scoring uh, applications from four different counties from across uh, rural America, because one of the things is how do we help our rural counties move up the prosperity ladder? And, and we're, we're an interesting county because we have both rural and urban. So we have the urban centers for prosperity, and then we have our rural areas that um, certainly a lot of these projects would fit into helping them uh, help their uh, folks uh, be prosperous. So today I will be finishing up an evaluation uh, from four different counties across the nation. And um, it's the Rural Leaders for Economic Mobility Cohort Application and Information Sheet. And we'll be pulling those folks together to really look at rural prosperity. And um, one of the counties that has applied for this that I have to evaluate today is our very own Union County uh, in Oregon, so I'm, cool. I'm knocking on wood that that when I'm, one thing I want to let folks know it's not just across the nation, but uh, it's important to bring things home uh, to our counties here in uh, the state of Oregon as well. So I'll be doing that today, and um, it was a real honor to be chosen for this, and I'm pretty excited about it. And hopefully, uh, we can get some best practices for our rural areas as well. Great. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Schrader. Commissioner West, you're up. Uh, not a ton to report this week. I'm excited about the state of the county right after this at the Monarch Hotel on the other side of the county. Um, I'm excited to talk about all the great progress we've made in a, the, with our recovery-oriented system of care, the issues around housing, homelessness, and substance abuse disorder. Um, how Clackamas County has just through really solid, good local government and practices really been a model, not just for Oregon, but the region. Um, and so that's really exciting stuff to get to report on just what's happened over the last not even quite year and a half and the substantial movements and changes we've been able to have in a positive direction. And I think I see that in many different facets of this county um, where we're the spearhead of positive change where there seems to be lacking a lot of that in our region and state. So I'm excited by that. I'll report on that here at the next meeting. Um, and congratulations, Commissioner Schrader. That's gonna be a valuable asset to, I, hope to so. I don't know if everybody knows this. I mean, we do on the, on the board, but Clackamas County has the largest rural population out of any county in the entire state. Um, even though we are also a very unique county because we're part of the Portland metro area. We're one of the three big counties that make up Portland metro, but our county extends beyond that and we have large rural populations. We have timberlands, we have forest lands. We do a lot more than other counties do service wise, just by our makeup and being, um, um, and by our charter and who we are. So uh, that will be really valuable, I think. Um, it's, it's the reason why it's such a fun county to work in, really. You're doing a lot of things. <laughs> you wear a lot of hats. You, you never know uh, from day to day. That's right. That's right. Um, and so uh, I think that will be really valuable. Um, and it's been really great to see how effective the Association of Oregon Counties has really engaged in the National Association of Counties, I think in a way that maybe hasn't been traditionally the case, um, where we've seen kind of local governments um, stand up and really be effective and use their voice. So uh, that's exciting to see. Um, yeah, and I look forward to the state of the county. Will you hear us talk a lot more about the different things that have been going on uh, here in just, I don't know, an hour or so? Yeah. You bet. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner West. Uh, the, I'm going to report on the continuing saga with Metro and the supported housing services dollars, uh, the tax that was supposed to, voters voted for 10 years, and now Metro at year three wants to extend it and make it permanent. Um, and under the auspices, oh, we need to build more housing with it and so forth. Um, and it's extremely controversial. And not only does Metro want to make it permanent, they want to yank a lot of the dollars away from the counties, and they want to put them into housing. Metro is not a housing authority. I don't believe Metro knows how to do it. This tax that voters voted on in the three-county area where Clackamas County voted no on, but were in the district anyway, in the urban growth boundary of Metro, 
um, said that this would expire and the, and the ballot language was the counties would be providing the housing. Now Metro wants to change all that because they realize that this tax has overperformed, meaning we're collecting more taxes on this than what they anticipated. My idea was stop collecting taxes for a year because it's very expensive for people in this income group who's paying for it. I, admittedly, counties took a year to gear up to provide housing because we needed places. We had to find resources. We had to find staff to help people in these situations. You just don't turn on a dime just because another jurisdiction gives you an order or the governor of the state of Oregon declares an emergency on it and says, counties, you'll do this in one month. It just doesn't work that way. So the three counties being Multnomah, Washington and Clackamas County, we are steadfast. We are holding our own. And we had a very interesting meeting this week that at least two of the counties are prepared to run a campaign against Metro should they decide to do this. I'll let you guess who the third one is not totally on that yet, but she might be. So it's very serious. Uh, it's a very serious money grab. Uh, I'm very sensitive about increasing taxes and continuing on this new tax mantra that the Oregon legislature and our regional government seems to want. They're also, Metro's also going out for a new tax on the zoo of $350 million, of which we can have climate-friendly uh, sheds for the elephants. Now, that may be notable in some areas, but if you continue to tax the people continually, without regard, without discernment, pretty soon they're just going to throw their hands up and say enough already. And um, I'm saddened by the Metro government has had the attitude that they've had on this uh, regarding the people who they supposedly represent. So um, we're fighting as hard as we can on that. We're speaking pretty much with one voice on this whole Metro business, and it's um, very, very hard. There's not a day that goes by that I'm not dealing with this issue uh, at some level because they keep changing the goalposts. They keep moving the goalposts over here and over here and expecting the counties to react to this. And it's, it's very trying, at the very least. Commissioner Shaw, you're up. Yes, Chair Smith, I just wanted to say that isn't it interesting that in 1973, when Senate Bill 100 was passed, it stood up the metro government, the metro urban growth boundary. The metro was charged with managing the Portland Zoo and recycling and garbage pickup. Over time, like so many governments do, they grow, they come up with more taxation, and they grow and come up with more taxation. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, in the Metro government coffers today, there's a, almost a billion dollars in reserve f funds, is there not? That is correct, Commissioner And uh, so I don't know, Chair Smith, exactly how expensive it is to feed those elephants in the zoo, but it seems to me a billion dollars should do it. <laughs> and so you're, uh, it's true. Uh, as Metro grows and duplicates the core functions of the three counties involved, that Metro becomes less and less attractive all the time. And could it be that sometime in the near future there is action taken to make Metro government a part of Oregon history? Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of discussions going on with that, uh, Commissioner Shaw. that very thing. Commissioner West, you're up. I want to jump on the bandwagon. Sure. Is it not true that also true that Metro owns an absurd amount of park lands, mm -hmm. even outside of its very own district, and they restrict the public from having absolutely any access to all of those lands? So they're not really parks; they're just land holdings that they gobble up across the region, um, and they completely even outside of their own jurisdiction. Yes. And so they can even come in and buy up areas in the county lands and other places, and then you don't get access to them as the public. And, you know, it's arguable whether or not they even maintain those lands. So we've just 
I mean, we could all go down the line here and talk about a mission creep. I think that Commissioner Scholl makes a really important point where it started with garbage collection and maintaining a zoo, which are notable issues as we collaborate with our regional partners on those infrastructure um, issues. But the mission creep is, is just never ending. Um, and so I think that that's a concern where th duties that are in most jurisdictions across the entire nation are handled by the county, and there isn't even a Metro extra layer bureaucratic government. Um, Metro wants to supersede and take over what I think is the just and right of constitutional authority of actual counties um, and local governments. Mm -hmm. So it is um, often um, perceived, in my opinion, in my opinion, by many in Clackamas mm -hmm. County to be quite an intrusive layer of government that still has not been able to really define itself well beyond garbage and zoos. Thank you. Um, just a point of clarification. Commissioner West was talking about the parks levy, that every time they put it up for renewal, people vote for the, to continue the parks tax. And what happens with that is Metro buys up private property and takes it off the tax rolls, all in the name of creating parks. I don't know of any Metro Park in Clackamas County that's fully functional that we can go visit. I don't think one exists. But they keep buying up our land, taking off the tax rolls, and literally putting a padlock and a gate on it, and you can't go in it. And it's not only in the tri-counties. There's some in Yamhill County yep. uh, and, and other counties that, what are they doing? What are they doing with it? Commissioner Savas. Yeah, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't at least share that there are some Metro own properties that are open to the public. One happens to be down the street on Abernathy or uh, Warner Mill. If you go take Warner Mill all the way to the end. We spent Warner Mill. That's the one that backs into Newell Creek. Mm. That, that's, that's got access and trails in it. There's okay. one in Wilsonville, but there's a lot that have zero access. Yeah, there are Most some. Most of them have zero access. Okay. But um, I don't even think, Paul, thank you for that, but I don't even think people know that they can go to that one on, on Newell Creek. And I'm, there's a lot of activity on, on Newell Creek that may make it not desirable to go to. True. If you understand what I mean on that. But thank you for that, Commissioner Savas. Any further discussions? Uh, seeing no further business before the commission, we are adjourned. <laughs>